Hello, this is Chris Minnick with Webucator. In this video, I'm going to show you Semantic Bootstrap. This video was inspired by a blog post by Adrian Hall, which is available at the URL shown here. If you use Bootstrap, you know that it adds a mess of classes to your typical application. For example, here's the header of an application containing Bootstrap classes. And here's the header that we want to end up with. Notice that the Bootstrap classes have been replaced with new semantic elements created using web components. In this video, we'll take the first steps in setting up the header semantically. What we want is a fixed header with the content scrolling behind it. Here's what the page looks like before styling. It's just using the default browser styles. There are two ways to use Bootstrap. The first way is to load Bootstrap and add standard Bootstrap classes to your HTML, as seen in this first example. The second way is to use Bootstrap as a library. In this method, you download the LESS or SAS files to your development environment and import the library as a reference. You can then use the mixins in the Bootstrap library within your own style sheet. Once you have the Bootstrap library in your build system, you can add a style sheet that imports the library. You can then start to define the styling for the header element like this in a file called main.less. After that, you can augment the styles with your own. Once this CSS has been built, the resulting HTML page looks like this. In this further developed version of main.less, a flexbox has been implemented in order to generate a responsive design. The S logo and S navigation menu elements have also been set up and styled, inheriting the bootstrap classes that were required within the header element. Note the use of a greater than prior to the S logo and S navigation menu elements. This means that it has to be a direct descendant in the HTML DOM. If you put the S logo in something else and then inside the header, this rule would not match. This is a great way of targeting the specific DOM elements you want. In his blog post, Adrian also explains how to use the web components and how he had to reorganize his gulp file for building combined files. You can download his complete code from the GitHub URL shown here. In the end, this new version of the header HTML hides the details of the implementation and is very readable. All the styling is done using CSS within the components, and there are no bootstrap classes in the page. With your page written this way, you get understandable HTML and a set of reusable components. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks again to Adrian for the inspiration. Check out his blog at the URL shown here for other articles related to web development.